Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to try to find the current in the entire circuit and the current through each of the two parallel branches. So those are called I1 and I2. And what we're going to do here is something different when it comes to trying to find, ooh, wait a minute, I think I have this wrong here. I think I want this I1 and I2. And uh, when it comes to trying to find I2, we're going to do that by subtracting I1 from the current into the circuit. So we're going to write this as I minus I1, and we should be able to get the current that way as well. But first, before we go any further, what we need to do is we need to find the parallel impedance of these two, two circuits, these two branches right here, and then we want to find the total impedance of the circuit, so that way we can compare that to the voltage and then find the total current because essentially the current can be found by taking the input voltage divided by the total impedance. So that's how we're going to find the total current. So start by finding the impedance right here of the two parallel branches. That would be equal to the product divided by the sum. And so we've already calculated the inductive reactance and the capacitive reactance right here. Notice that the frequency of the circuit is 60 Hz, that means 60 cycles per second, and here the omega is 377 Hz, which is radians per second. Sometimes those two get confused when they say what's the frequency of the circuit. Typically, it is the cycles per second that's indicated, but in order to calculate the inductive and capacitive reactants, we have to use the omega, which is in terms of radians per second. So let's find the parallel impedance that's equal to the product, which is J22.62 multiplied times 40, divided by the sum, which would be 40 plus J22.62. So let's see what we get here. 22.62 uh, times 40 gives us 904.8 J. So it would be J904.8. We divide that by, well, we're going to convert this into the magnitude and phase angle format. Let's do that. So we have a 40 squared plus 22.62 squared equals, take the square root, that's 45.95 with a phase angle of 22.62 divided by 40. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is 29.49 degrees. And of course, this here will become, uh, that would be, if we convert that, that's 904.8 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. So when we then go ahead and divide this into that, we get 904.8 divided by 45.95, and that gives us 19.69 uh, with a phase angle of 90 minus 29.49, that gives us 60.51 degrees. Okay, that gives us Z parallel. Since we're going to have to add the parallel branch to the impedance of these two components here, let's write this also into the real and imaginary part format. So we take 60.51, take the cosine of that, times 19.69, and that gives us 9.69. So Z parallel is equal to 9.69 plus J, and we have 60.51, take the sine of that, multiply it times 19.69, and that gives us 17.14. So now we have the parallel impedance of these two components. Now we want to add that to the impedance over here to find the total impedance. So Z total is equal to the sum of those two added to the parallel branch. So that gives us 12 minus J53, and that's then added to 9.69 plus J17.14. Okay, adding this together, we get Z total is equal to 12 plus that, that's 21.69 minus J, so 53 minus plus 17.14, what's minus? 35.86, and then since we're going to have to, to uh, multiply that with the voltage over here, which is in amplitude or magnitude and phase angle format, let's reconvert that. 
So this is equal to 21.69 squared plus 35.86 squared equals, take the square root, that's 41.91 with a phase angle of 35.86 divided by 21.69, take the inverse tangent, that would be a minus 58.83 degrees. Okay, now that we have the total impedance, now we can go ahead and find the current, so that gives us the voltage. The voltage is given as 50 with a phase angle of 0 degrees, divided by the total impedance, which is 41.91 with a phase angle of minus 58.83 degrees. So this is equal to 50 divided by 41.91, that gives us 1.19 with a phase angle of 58.83 degrees, and of course, that's in terms of amps. So that's the total current going into the circuit. Now we have to find the current in branch one and the current in branch two. To find the current in branch one, what we can do is as follows. We can take the total current entering the circuit and multiplying it times the following. So we have I1 is equal to I total times the ratio of the impedance in the other branch, which is 40, divided by the sum of the two impedances, so 40 plus J22.62. So 40 plus J22.62. Now we have to reconvert that into a format so we can make the division. So this is equal to I, which is given right there, so that would be 1.19 with a phase angle of 58.83 degrees, so that's the current going into the circuit, multiply it times 40 with a phase angle of 0 degrees, and dividing it by this. And so here we have to reconvert into the magnitude and phase angle format so we can calculate that. So we have 40 squared plus 22.62 squared. Take the square root of that, which is 45.95, with a phase angle of 22.62 divided by 40. Take the inverse tangent of that, that gives us 29.49 degrees. Now let's go ahead and calculate that. So the current I1 is equal to 1.19 times 40 divided by 45.95 equals, so 1.04 1.04 amps with a phase angle of 58.83 minus 29.49 equals 29.34 degrees. And converting that into the real and imaginary part, we take the cosine of that and multiply that time times 1.04, we get 0.91 plus J, and so we take 29.34, take the sine of that, and multiply times 1.04, and we get 0 0.51. So now we have the current I1 in terms of the real and imaginary part, or in terms of the magnitude and phase angle. So now we're going to find I2 by subtracting that current from the total current right here. Now to do that, we have to convert that into the real and imaginary part. So we get 58.83. We take the cosine of that and we multiply that times 1.19. So it gives us 0 0.62, 0 0.62 plus J, 58.83. And we're taking the sine of that and multiply that times 1.19 and we get 1.02. So this is the current going into the circuit at the source. And so now we take that current, which is 0 0.62 plus J 1.02 and subtracting from that I1, which is 0 0.91 plus J 0.51. All right, let's go ahead and do that. This is equal to 
0.62 minus 0.91, that gives us minus 0.29, and that would be plus J 1.02 minus 0.51, that's equal to a positive 0.51, and to convert that to magnitude and amplitude format, we go 0.51 squared plus 0.29 squared equals take the square root which is 0 0.59 so this is equal to 0 0.59 with a phase angle now we have to be careful because what i'm going to do here is factor out a negative this is equal to negative a positive 0 0.29 minus j 0 0.51 so the reason why i did that is because it's going to be easier than to convert the angle so we're going to put a minus in front of that. So this is equal to minus 0 0.59 with a phase angle of 0.51 divided by 0.29. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is a minus 60.37 or 38 degrees. Now to get rid of the negative, I can add 180 degrees to that. So add 180 to that. And that gives us, this is equal to 0 0.59 with a phase angle of a positive 119.62 degrees. So either way will give us the right answer. So if we now want to convert that into, let's see, we have I2, which is equal to this or equal to that. So let me go ahead and box this in. So we can write it like this or we can write it like that. And now what we found was we found the total current in the circuit, we found I1 in branch 1, we found I2 in branch 2 by subtracting I1 from the total current. We could have also used the same technique we did over here to find I2, but I thought it might be interesting to try this technique instead. And that's how it's done.